Hi there, YouTube. This is Jim at J. Shane Smoking Pipes. And just wanted to get on here and do a quick video. This beautiful rainy Saturday afternoon here in Auburn, California. Sitting here in my shop. Just got done working on a few uh, pipes. And uh, thought I'd do a quick video. And it was brought to my attention that in the last video, I really didn't go into my <clears throat> smoking or making background. So I thought I'd do that real quick. A little housekeeping real quick. I'm smoking some old Joe Krantz from Cornell and Deal in one of my shop pipes. Nice little apple. Didn't quite make the grade, so I went ahead and kept it for myself. I'm also drinking some pumpkin spice coffee here. So, where do we start? Start at the beginning. About 23 years ago, I started smoking pipes and cigars. And didn't have much luck with the pipes because I didn't know how to pack them. And I'd pack them too tight and burn the heck out of my tongue and didn't know why. And I had such fond memories of my father smoking his pipe when I was younger, when I was a kid. And the tobacco smelled so great. And I just, you know, really wanted to smoke them. But the pipes, I just didn't know how to, to work or tamp them. So I stuck with cigars. Once or twice a year, I'd go ahead and pull out a pipe and pack it up and try and smoke it. But... I always had a hard time, you know, keeping it lit and keeping it going and not, you know, burning the heck out of my tongue. So about three and a half years ago or so, I was talking to a local tobacconist and I was looking at the pipes and I was really appreciating the smooth pipes he had there. And I'm an old time woodworker. My father and I have done wood projects ever since I was a little kid. Anything from jewelry boxes to humidors to turning bowls or candlesticks or making furniture or cupboards. Always had a project on the weekends. So every time I was in a tobacco shop, I always check out the pipes. I was drawn to them. So when the, the tobacco said, hey, you, you want to look at the pipes? And I told him I didn't know, you know, really how to pack it. It didn't really work for me. He says, well, you know, next time you come by, bring your pipes and I'll show you how to pack it. And I told him, you know what? I'll buy that Peterson right now if you show me how to pack it. And he said, sure, let's do it. So he went ahead and showed me how to pack the bowl, how to get it lit. And he sat down with me and we had a nice visit. And every so often he'd tell me, hey, tamp it. So I'd tamp it. And I was able to smoke it all the way down to the bottom. And it just blew my mind. It opened up a whole new, war, new world to me. So I went ahead and uh, started smoking pipes and pretty much just stuck with the pipes. I had a few cigars here and there, but I, I switched over to the pipes. And I started collecting like most people, you know, they start getting a few pipes here and there. And I, I got, you know, a Stanwell, a GBD, um, Found out that I really liked the pipes and was smoking them more and more, so I started to, to collect a few more and got a few Costellos, Ferndown, Mark Tinsky. And I had bought a few pipes from Mark Tinsky. And long story short, I got a hold of, of Mark after he emailed me thanking me. And my dad and I got a chance to go over and see his workshop when we were back in Montana hunting one year. It was about three years ago. And Mark helped me make my first pipe. And once I, I made that first pipe, I was hooked. I just wanted to make more and more pipes. So I, I bought a bunch of briar from Mark and pre-made stems and came home and started making pipes. And I was, I was just making them one after another, banging them out. And I, I was close to running out of briar. So I contacted Mark and I, I bought all the extra briar he had for the year. So I had to find briar somewhere else. So uh, I went online, I was looking, and I was checking out Instagram, and I saw that Chris Morgan had some briar for sale. 
So I contacted Chris, and Chris is about three and a half hours away from me, so he's a little bit closer and a little easier for me to get Briar from. And Chris and I started talking, and we hit it off. We became friends real quick. And it wasn't too long before I was down at his house working with him in his workshop, and I learned a lot real quick from Chris. He cut the learning curve for me at least by half, if not more than that. Um, when Chris agreed to take me under his wing, I was very, very, very lucky. Chris is very patient. He'd work with me. He'd, he'd give me things to try, and he'd turn me loose for a week or two, and he'd, he'd check in with me, how's it going, what's going on, what happened with that, did that work for you? And I got a chance to learn on my own, make mistakes, learn how to fix the mistakes, and learn how not to do them again. And I have to admit, there were a few blocks of briar that flew across the shop and slammed into the wall. It happens. When things aren't going your way, stuff happens. So, I've been working with Chris for about the last two and a half years now. And he's, he's helped me a bunch. And Chris told me, you know, you really need to go to pipe shows. You need to get your name out there, show people what you can do, meet other pipe makers and talk to them, and meet people in the industry. So I started going to pipe shows uh, almost three years ago. I went to my first one. Getting ready to go to my third Las Vegas show in about three weeks now. And uh, at that first show in Vegas, I met Ernie Markle. And Ernie's a very busy guy. I mean, everyone wants to talk to him. Everyone wants to buy pipes from Ernie. Everyone wants to, to commission pipes. I mean, he's a very busy guy. It's, it's hard to get, find time and Ernie made time to come over and he spent a couple hours with me going over all my pipes critiquing them checking them out and giving me a lot of ideas on how to, how to get better shapes better transitions and different tips on how to do things like shank caps things inserts things of that nature so it was it was worth it going to that show just to talk to Ernie and I met other pipe makers at other shows, uh, people like Grant Batson. You know, he was great. He took time out to, to critique my pipes, go over them with me, and give me ideas on how to do different things. And pipe shows are, are great because you get pipe makers there, you get people from the industry there, the tobacco industry, and they're there to talk to you. I can't say enough, you need to go to a pipe show if you get a chance. Pipe shows are great. Uh, Everyone there, they want to promote the industry, and they enjoy talking to people. That's why they're there. And you get to ask them questions. There's no stupid questions. We all start, and we all have questions on how to do things or how pipes are made, things of that nature. And, and they're a great resource. It's a lot of fun going to the pipe shows. And, I mean, going to pipe shows, I, I was lucky enough to get to meet Dirk Heinemann uh, from Germany and talk to him and he's giving me some great tips. Also Scott from Sparky's Pipes. Met Scott last year in Chicago and got the chance to sit down with him, go over the pipes and built up a relationship with Scott and been able to go ahead and talk to him on Boxer and learn different techniques from him. And everyone does things differently. You can go to a pipe show and you can ask 10 pipe makers how to do something and odds are they're all gonna tell you a different way of doing it because they do what works for them. And you take all that information back to your shop, try them all out, see what works for you, and it, it just it helps a bunch. It, it really cuts down the learning curve. And I could tell every time I came back from a pipe show and I started trying new things, you know, the, the pipes would jump up a notch. And you start off making pipes and you think, man, these pipes look pretty darn good. And you go to the pipe shows, you start looking around, and you're like, wow, they aren't that good. These guys are really good. And hard work and repetition and you get a feel for it and you start getting a better eye for it and you advance your, your pipe making ability. And I can't say enough about these guys. You know, all the guys I made, met at the shows are great. They make great pipes. I've got uh, Ernie Markle, Chris Morgan, Mark Tinsky pipes, uh, Dirk Heineman. Mark Bolkovic. Mark Bolkovic's a great guy also. I was able to get in touch with Mark and get a chance to talk to him 
and he's helped me out a bunch too. Whenever I have questions, you know, I get to talk to these guys, uh, maybe Skype with them, show them what's going on, and all of them would give me different answers. And so I tried different ways of doing it. And I'd learn things like how to work with bamboo or work with horn or do shank caps or do wood inlays, things of that nature. And they're a bunch of great guys. They make fantastic pipes. And if you get a chance, please go to a pipe show. I can't say it enough. You'll enjoy it. Trust me. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and shut this down. Uh, I shot a video yesterday and tried to upload it. And after three attempts, it just came up with an error thing and I wasn't able to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. And uh, if you guys are interested in, in looking at my work, I have a, a website at my initials, jdsmokingpipes.com. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me through the, the uh, website or you can just shoot me an email, jim at jdsmokingpipes.com. And uh, if you have any questions about pipes or if you're interested in commissioning a pipe, just let me know. I pulled my pipes off the website because I'm, I'm going to take them to uh, Las Vegas. And I have to have a few there to show. So I'll try and shoot some videos in the near future to show you the pipes I'm making. Or you can, you can jump on Instagram and check out uh, JD Smoking Pipes. And I usually post uh, pictures of the pipes I'm working on on Instagram also. So I hope you have a good evening and stay smoky, everybody. Bye-bye.